what are some of your favorite Asian dishes to eat that you cannot find at the restaurant? Let's talk about it because a lot of restaurants don't serve some of your favorite dishes. Why? Why? This went viral on Reddit, guys. People were talking about this dish, that dish. I love this. It's a homestyle dish my grandma made, my mother made, but I cannot find it out. And a lot of people were perplexed. Why? So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications, Andrew, because... This is a fun one. This is just about some deep cut Asian food knowledge. Yeah, but one chili oil that you can't find at the restaurant yet either, but maybe you will soon, is Smala Sauce. Hopefully we're gonna be hitting some physical markets around the New York area soon, but you can still order it. Shipments are going out early November, very, very soon in the Thank next couple weeks. Thank you for being patient, guys. Yes, I know it's taken a while. I get it. Thank you for waiting. It's our first time. Hang in there with us. It's really good. Smalasauce.com. From Sichuan to Sicily. Andrew, the original post was about uh, this Vietnamese stewed pork and egg dish called Tick Call. And this person was just like, man... I know there's a lot of Vietnamese restaurants in America, but I could just not find this anywhere. And the few times that I found Take Call, it wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, guys, there's a number of dishes that obviously you know from your childhood, things that your grandmother made or things that you've had at some restaurant, maybe one restaurant. Or, or maybe back in Asia. Yeah, maybe you had it overseas and you were like, dude, I love this dish. How come they don't serve it? And there's so many reasons why they don't serve it. Sometimes it's just because... No one's ever requested for it. So the restaurant, they don't care if you never ask for it. So anyways, guys, we're going to get into the myriad of answers and comments. So again, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. David, what's one of your dishes that you love that is so hard to find at a restaurant? Man, they try to enter the U.S. market and like I want to say 60% of them failed. We're talking about yellow braised chicken rice from Jinan Shangdong, mm. a.k.a. Huang Men Ji Fan. Yeah. And this is a dish for northern Chinese construction workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some but real how, gummers. If, it, if you like it so much, why don't you think more restaurants do it? Is it just that because you have to base a whole restaurant around it and nobody wants to base the restaurant around it or it's not really a beautiful, pretty dish that you can mark up? You know what I yeah. mean? It's like a chicken I mean, stew. I, I don't know because I'm not fully that deep in the restaurant industry to understand all the semantics of it. I do think it takes a lot of time. I think the stone pots like take up a lot of grill space. So you're always looking at your real estate distribution. But also for some reason, all the versions that I had in the US, even the versions in Canada were better, were like half as good right. as the ones overseas. Right. I'm talking about Ying's chicken rice. Yeah, it seems like you could re you should be able to recreate it. Um, Somebody bring it. Bring one, it. one of my favorites is steamed salmon with, with ginger scallion. So there's a lot of steamed fish with ginger scallion at like a lot of Cantonese restaurants. Like white fish. Yeah, it's white. It's usually a, a cod or a bass or like even a tilapia. But with salmon and salmon being one of the most popular sushi fish, why isn't it steamed more? Well, well, well salmon, it is more of a Western fish. It's a Western fish, but how come it's not steamed more in America? I don't get that. And then also the uh, shou zhua bing, which is like a, a scallion pancake roll, often very popular all over China, especially in Taiwan at the markets. Oh, are you talking about the one that they, they can kind of make it like an egg McMuffin? Dude, you can make it like a burrito, make it a breakfast version. Yes, some little small pop-ups, do it here and there, but really you can't find it. And I'm like, listen, if you're going to sell scallion pancakes at your restaurant, what about selling a scallion pancake breakfast roll? Yeah, some people were saying that it's because these dishes are theoretically too easy to make at home. So the parents or just immigrants in general would want to say, oh, let's order something on the menu that uses a lot of techniques or equipment that we wouldn't have at home. Mm. Do you think that that's part of it? I think that's more of the parents' calculus than the calculus of second or third gen. I, I think a lot of restaurants, if you ask them, like, hey, at, if you go to a pho restaurant, you're like, hey, how come you don't carry tit call? How come you don't t carry tit call? And and then they're just like, yeah, man, like nobody like asked for it. So he's like, I'm just trying to sell what sells. So like right. pho, bowl call, rice plates, bun mees. That's what's going to sell. I, I notice a lot of stews don't do that well in a, for a bulk distribution market in America. Yeah, I think you can't serve too many different stews because it takes up too much space in the kitchen because you got to keep the stew going. You got to make it in big, big portions. Well, sometimes you got to cook it for like 48 hours. Too, yeah, right? yes. Gonna, 
And if it's, it's not Rush pho, might burn down, right? Yeah, but pho and other noodle, like one or two noodle soups is the only one that's worth keeping a big pot for, you know? Yeah, what I, mean? so. I think uh, there are some street foods, Andrew, that are like not popular. Maybe they could become popular with some upgrade gimmicks. You know, some people would call them gimmicks. Some people would just call them upgrades. Tomato egg, the, the Chinese stir fry dish. Maybe you put some meat in it. The the, the fanji de chao dan. Mm-hmm. Maybe the uh, street snacks could use, you know, gai dan sai, which is mm-hmm. the Hong Kong egg waffles. It, it, it just needs more flavors embedded in the in the carb. Mm. Um, I think a lot of these dishes that people feel nostalgic for are also cultural ceremonial dishes mm. that may not, they, they may have a certain time of the year or a certain ritual that they're associated with. Uh-huh. Um, regional dishes such as Ilocano food in the Philippines, they're not going to have any representation in America more than likely, right? Because people are just going to question it. Um, also, I think some of these interesting versions of foods, Andrew, they may split the market. Tik Call has a Chinese Malaysian version called Tai Kai Palo uh, or, or Tao Yak Bak in, uh, because it, it all came from Hokkien immigrants to right. Southeast Asia originally. Right, right, but of right, course, right, everybody's right. got their different versions. Anyway, let's just get into the, some of the things that people said in the comment section. So Andrew. these are dishes that most people, whenever they eat it, they love it, but they're still somewhat rare to find at these restaurants. Yes. Tik Call and Ban Tet. Okay. Have you ever had Bantet? Definitely is hard to find unless you go to like a Viet market. That almost looks like a Viet Zongzi. I don't think I ever had that before. Can Chua. Yeah. I used to get Can Chua at Vietnam restaurant all the time. I've seen it at a couple spots, but only if they have a huge menu and it's probably not that good. Newport Newport Seafood Tan. Yeah. Hu Tiu. Hu Tiu is good. And I'm seeing more spots serve it, but you know what it is? Some... Both spots serve these dishes, but they're they they're like throwaway dishes. Like they like don't, they don't put it. their heart into it. No, 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 no. Uh, also, Cambodians eat a version of it called katil, mm-hmm. and it looks very similar. Shout out to Hutil. I used to get that at Golden Deli all the time in San Gabriel. Andrew, Cam Ko Kwa Ut, the stuffed squashes in a hot pot mm, and stuffed that, peppers. That looks actually really good. I never had that before. Bun Kun. Yeah. Bun Kun is a Vietnamese version of Cheng Fun. Yeah, I like Bun Kun a lot, but I'm not. I, I feel like quite a few Viet spots serve it, but only a few spots do it good. A lot of them don't care. Bun Mi Chek Ali used to do it good, the best for the cheapest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, a lot of people were listing South Indian dishes because Andrew South Indian food has less representation than the butter chickens and the garlic naans of North Indian exactly. cuisine. Exactly. I probably the only main like South Indian dish people know is like the dosa. Right, you know I mean? right, right, right. And it's because uh, a lot of South Indian cuisine is vegetarian. The uh, avial, they use a lot of coconut milk and uh, different, I want to say okras in I there. I don't think I've ever had that. Kali kozambu. Mm. It's a uh, potato stew, and mm. you eat it with coconut rice. It looks really, that really good. I've never good. had it before. Bendakaya, it's just another stewed vegetable. Is that okra? Yeah. Oh, I don't love okra, but... For Chinese people, were saying fan che chao dan, tomato egg was their number one. Do you think it's valid to get this out? Or if your mom's like, no, 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 we can make fan che chao dan at home, you know? You know what I would say to mom if she says, no, 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 don't get it. I'll make it at home. Are you going to make it at home? Are you going to go home and make it, mom? Are you? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about uh, that? You just got to go get it when you want it. If, you're if feeling it's it. really good. But I'll tell you this. Sometimes it can disappoint you at the restaurant if it's a throwaway dish. They won't. They'll just whip it up real quick. They don't care. Right. A lot of people are talking about the pricing as well because when it comes to jimbing or specifically jimbing guozi, which is under the uh, fat crepes, they were saying in China, it's one to two dollars U.S., in America, it's up to 14 due to the labor costs. How much do you think it matters when there's a 7x jump from the hometown? Dude, why did manufacturing move to China? Same reason why the Jan Bing is cheaper there, okay? Because of labor. Yeah. I know Jan Bings are kind of expensive in America, but I don't know. Yeah, I, at least we have them. Well, because somebody has to kind of artisanally pour yeah, everything. it's a crepe. It's a crepe. I've literally seen, I've, got, I've bought a $16 crepe like French crepe before. Uh-huh. And then I've also paid for a high-end Jenbing, and they're made the exact same way. Right. Same pan, different ingredients. I, I like the Peking duck Jenbing, though. There's a little bit of a, the American fusion in there. Scallion oil noodles, whether it's Yopo Mien or Danzai Mien or, or these different mm. ones. Um, steamed pork belly and shrimp. Whoa, this one's a deep cut Cantonese one, I'm assuming. Yo, I don't even know if I've ever had this before. I don't before. know if I've I had this I was kind of shocked. This that might seems be like some, yeah. Snow cotton egg white fried red bean paste. I've this never is, had this before. Yo, it looks good. It looks like something 
a, a better version of what I've had. To have the Hong Dao Real dipped in the egg whites. Sure. Somebody said soy bean sprouts with ground pork. This mm. looks like a simple homemade dish. Mm. You probably can get it out somewhere in Flushing or in 626, but yeah, probably not popular. Gu Tou Tang, this is a pork soup with turnips and um, large dates in it. Um, once you get to Japanese food, Andrew, people were talking about, man, I always miss just tomatoes with soy sauce. This is a very common, I guess, Japanese side dish. Dude, I want to make that. I never had that before. Tonjiro pork stew. Again, the stews, Andrew, always overlooked. Right, 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 right. Nik Nikujaga. Nikujaga is another beef stew, beef potato stew from Japan. Yeah, I can say, I, I don't even know what, what Japanese restaurant I would go if I wanted to get any of those. Yeah, there's only one place in Little Tokyo, L.A. Suhiro used to have a lot of this stuff. Uh. Suhiro, I... They used to have it, and it was open, like, super late. Um, Filipinos also have their own version of tomato egg they got from Hokin Traders, but they mm. put onions in it. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. But they also have a more Spanish version, because like we said, Filipino food has so many different influences as well of its own, Andrew, that is diced up eggs with tomato and raw onions, almost like a diced up boiled egg salad, egg salad right? That does not look as good, but, <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it doesn't. So. Yeah. Somebody said chicken in a sol. Mm. Um, this is actually possibly starting to come over, Andrew. I'm starting, oh, to, see, I'm starting to see more chicken in a sol on Phil uh, the new Filipino restaurants. I think the old ones, I don't know if they're gonna sell. I don't know if they're gonna sell it. I don't know if it's a, it's a grill reason. I'm not sure. Uh, so, uh, did, but if it's a grilled chicken leg, who's gonna hate on it? Yo, I had to look it up. There's about 10 to 20 videos on YouTube explaining you how to make chicken in a sol in an air fryer. Uh, so hey guys, I'm we might uh, make it next. Jollibee's group, bring it over though. Uh, somebody sent from Malaysia, Malaysian kolo mi. And these are a lot of dishes that come from Brunei, Borneo, Kalimantan, which is a border mm. region between Indonesia and Malaysia. Right. Be Borneo, Kalimantan from Alhambra yeah, was yeah, a, yeah. the 10 up. That restaurant is crazy. Dude, I mean, Malaysian food has a lot of depth to it, man. So I, I feel like we've only scratched the surface of Malaysian food in America. Dude, some of the me's, the me GM's and dude, stuff like that. I'm watching all this stuff on TikTok, like KL Foodie, and I'm just like, dude, when am I going to eat that? Man, shout out to Penang, Ipo, um, Assam Laksa. You know, I, that, I could see for people who really like that tamarind flavor soup, I could see being into mm -hmm. it. I'm not as into it. Someone said you can't find good bakote in America. You can't find it as a medicinal. lot of people are not going to put their effort into making a good bakote, a, a good herbal pork stew. Yo, that is so herbal in Penang, Malaysia. You cannot believe it. Uh, for Koreans, people said uh, miyokguk, which is a uh, a beef and kelp seaweed soup. Oh, I've never seen that. Yeah, that it looks good. I think it's ceremonial. Somebody said a lot of uh, the chicken dishes, dak jim, dak tori tang, you know. These are all like, I would say out of the, all these ones, I'm going with Doc Jim or Jim Doc. Man, if you guys ever watched this one documentary on Netflix called Nation of Kimchi or Nation of Panchan, there are so many different types of Panchan that I've never had that look delicious from mm. that show. So I, I yeah, want. So you're saying the American representation of Panchan is limited relative to the Panchans no, they got over there? There's a couple premium specialty Korean barbecues you can go to that specialize in giving you all oh, these Oh, no, they give you panchans. like 30 or 40, right? Yeah, they're like, oh, we specialize in the 20 Panchans. Like, you know, but other than that, you're going to get like four or five. That's it. Right, right. Pat Juk. Pat Juk is their version. Uh, like we said, Juk or Juk is the, is the same word. And uh, yeah, they do a red bean paste, but they throw some nuts and some pumpkins on it too. I mm. thought that was pretty cool. So shout out to Pat Juk. I'd like to try that. Moving on to Thailand, Andrew. A lot of people talk about the mountainous, more village dishes. I believe this comes from the Isan Lao border. Kanom Chin Nam Kao. I can see why they don't sell this at the restaurant, bro. You say because the chicken, chicken feet, feet just thrown in there. Especially that type of chicken feet where it's not like falling off the bone. It's a little bit more like chewy and like, you know, tight. It looks around good. The knuckle. It looks good, but this not coming uh, over. Minus the chicken feet, yeah. Uh, people say guay job. This is a five spice rolled noodle that you can get on the streets of Thailand. Mm. Um, basically, the noodles, they come in these like little squares. And once they cook them, they roll up. Mm. So shout out to Gui Jop. Um, anyway, let's just get into the comment section, Andrew. Should people just get what they want, regardless of what their parents think? Their parents, oh, we can make it at home. Don't get this. Bro. Oh, yo, you want to get the tudo si or something like that? You know, just some some potato with some pork or whatever. We can make it at home. I mean, unless you're gonna make it at home, just get it when you're out, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that sometimes. It's fun to get home style dishes at the restaurant, even if they don't do it even as good as you make it at home. Because 
you kind of want to see how someone else is going to make it. Like right. it's fun, and and sometimes you just want to eat what you want to eat. So I don't think it's wrong. I mean, try it once and then see if that restaurant can do it well. And if they don't do it well, then maybe you don't have to get it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we we could get something we could make at home, or we could get the imperial style things that the emperor like was eating. One ton noodles. I will never make that at home because you can get it at so many restaurants, right? And it's good and it's cheap. But at there restaurants. are certain things that I would probably more think about making at home. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, man, I just love Yuk Bang, which is this like toy san meat patty yeah, yeah, yeah. with like a uh, ham yu in there with uh, sardines or anchovies. And they were saying, but man, I, only, I always just see the staff eating it for a manager's meal. Yeah, that is the ultimate worker's meal is the Yuk Bang is this meat patty. If you go to certain Cantonese restaurants and you see the workers, they'll, they just got this big patty on top of rice and they just break up pieces of it. And they just eat it. And that's like, it kind of smells if you're not ready for it because it'll have like a slight fishy. Salty, anchovies in it, right? Yeah, yeah, anchovies, fishy smell. But it tastes kind of good. But like, yeah, it's totally a blue. I mean, that's like a blue collar worker meal. You know what I mean? Right, and right, a lot right. of restaurants, they don't want to serve what they would serve to the workers. Man, they, they don't know if it would sell. Yeah, that's true. Some of these dishes are not pretty. Some of these are not marketable dishes, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, of course, in Asia, you can find more places that will serve these things to you. Because uh, in Asia, obviously, or in respective countries, there's just going to be like a wide range or wide, much wider range of depth. But at the end of the day, the American restaurants, they are sort of beholden to what has margin, what is easy to cook, and what will allow them to survive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just the capitalism aspects and the economics. Um... Ultimately, do you think these homestyle stew dishes are making it in America or not? At some specialty restaurants, maybe the hipster ones that are trying to be like, oh, you know, I'm serving my childhood dishes with French techniques mixed in with my mom's cooking. You know, some of those spots are going to serve it. But other than that, no, these a lot of these dishes, it's going to be hard to market them. I'm not saying forever because I think that a lot of dishes were unmarketable for a while, but then became popular. The chaka. The, the Vietnamese dill catfish yeah. that has since become more popular. Yeah, did dim sum spots always serve chicken feet? When did that, like, become, like, when did people become confident that people would buy that? You know, I don't know, maybe. But, like, I don't know. It's tough for the stews because also I think the stews, Andrew, they don't necessarily encourage alcohol or beverage consumption. That's also another higher margin item mm. that people need. And they're yeah, very, I'll tell like, you this. Uh, Protein intensive with the meat. That, that, that's potato. a good point. And I would say, listen, for Chinese restaurant, if they can stir fry it, they might serve it. Because it's much you, quicker. But if you yeah. make them stew it, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I always like goulash and I always thought, man, how, how come I can't get any goulash in America unless it's like I'm paying like 20 bucks for it from Eastern Europe. Anyway, guys, let us know what are some dishes you wish you could find that are either home style or just really authentic or obscure from the country you're from or the country that you know and you can't find it in America. I always thought Korean hotoks, there could there needed to be a Korean hotok spot because I love the honey nut mixture that's in a hotok. But it's just hard to find. And a lot of places they just treat it like a throwaway item. Like we said, leave it in the comment section below. It's a good thread. It makes you think deeper about other Asians, not your own. And even are you consuming? I'll tell you this, Andrew. After this thread, next time I see take call at a Viet spot, I'm getting it. Until next time, we'd hop out, boys. We out. Peace.